Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to talk about the Overready Boss 35 flashlight here. Now, this is going to be probably just a first video of a few in a series. I don't know when exactly that's all going to go down. Um, if you check out the live stream I did last Saturday, I think it's the 16th of December, off the edge uh, live stream, you can actually see me program this. And I'll show you a little bit of that here on my phone. Um, but it's pretty cool. You program this off of a screen, which is cool. The one thing that I think would get mistaken when you tell people that is you still need to do inputs with the switch to get it to program it. So it's not just like you don't have to deal with clicking and shit, you know, where I think a lot of us, um, me really not included, don't like having to do a bunch of taps to do stuff on a flashlight to program it. But um, the driver in here is just a lot more advanced than what's in here. This is the Deadwood Customs. Huckleberry, and I'm going to do a video on this soon as well, and I love this flashlight. Um, it's it's really, really well done design-wise, but it has the same bones as a bunch of lights I've already reviewed. It's got the Dragon Driver in it, and um, you get a secondary color, and then you get all of your um, um, LEDs, right? Sorry, you get your white light. And um, I don't know what's in here because I bought this secondary and didn't come with a COA. Or it did, but it didn't list the emitters, which was weird. Um, but anyway, point being is this is simple. You get like 12 choices uh, for what kind of setup you want um, in terms of modes. And then you can turn memory on and off. You can have reverse options. Um, you can have a sort of double press to turbo and strobe and battery check that I have off right now. Um, but that's pretty much it for programmability where this is pretty wild. Um, it uses a system of pin codes in order to get you to do what you want to do. So there's like one to check battery. There's one to turn on different uh, modes. There's a motion sensing mode in this flashlight actually um which is pretty wild i haven't been able to use it and we'll talk about why um but there's also a proximity sensor in this that you can turn on or adjust sensitivity on um you obviously have a secondary light but on this one you'll see it's just that one little secondary light where on the ones with the dragon driver you're going to see three right? And the color is just the color. You can get this in red, you can get this in amber, I'm sure. Um, but this is actually pretty bright for the one light. I really like it. I use it as a moonlight mode. Excuse me. Um, and then it has that uh, motion sensor and the optical sensor for proximity and for programming. I don't know if it's the same one for those two, but it might be. Um, and then you can actually switch between four different pages, they call it. And essentially, you can set up each page to have different uh, modes, settings, right? And then you can switch between the four. So let's say you're going camping and you like to have your beacon on there. Or you like to have uh, just turbo all the time. You can switch to a mode that has that. Um, speaking of the beacon, this has a... Um, feature where you can actually turn on a beacon where every three seconds that amber light blinks which is really cool and because it has this switch called the MOF switch which stands for momentary off so MOF as I understand it this switch is always on and I guess when you hold down you're turning it off by doing that and then tapping just cycles through right so it's always on but you're just cycling through uh, modes, but then you hold down and it kills it, right? Um, but you can actually put on one of those beacons and then you can just have on that mode and it'll just blink every three seconds. And you could have that on indefinitely. 
Um, and it's not too much of a drain on the battery because this, again, driver is very smart. It's able to conserve battery in a really good way. Um, it's wild. It does a lot of cool stuff. Now, unlike a McClicky switch, where with this switch, it's a forward clicky, you do half presses. So I would say the term click is a full press. Click. A tap is a half press. And with the McClicky switch, you're just cycling through, finding what you want, and then doing the full click. With this switch, you just have really one tap. You can elongate the tap and that'll turn it off, but it's one click. There's not a half and a full. Um, and then you just keep tapping till you get to what you want. Hold down to turn off. Very simple. Um, it's a little more um, maybe precise than this one. Like, let's say I want to get to mode three, which is this mode. I would go... Right, okay, so now let's just wait until it resets to red. Okay, so here we go, we want three. So I can do that pretty easy with this one. I'm right there with three. It's a little more precise if you want longer taps. I don't know why you would want that. One, two, three, four, five. So I have five settings on this. So let's say I want to get to the fifth one. I'm right there. Right, where with this, I feel like trying to get to five would be a little bit trickier to get the taps right to what you want. Um, I don't know, I really like the McClicky, it's probably my favorite switch. And this one's cool, but it's also different. And all my other ones are McClicky, so it makes it a little harder to remember. Like, you know, sometimes I'll just click it instead of um, turning it off and stuff like that, which. You know, that's just carrying it and getting used to it. But a lot of people love this switch. I'm not sold on it, but I think part of it is I'm having issues with the pins. Um, I've talked to OverReady, and basically what I've been told is there's something going on with the driver, with the emitters I have in there, and maybe with the switch. I don't know if it's tied to the switch. I think it's just the driver and the emitters. It's forcing the pins to be done a lot faster and it just messes with timing, and it's just not working right, essentially. So they're looking into it, they're gonna try to find a fix, etc. So I can't do a lot of things I wanna do. Like I wanna be able to do battery check, which I understand is just three clicks. The pin for that is one, one, one. So you would hold down to cut power, and with this, you have to let go, basically, and that's like one it's backwards where this would just be like one pause one pause one pause and then you would be there you know what i mean this one you have to like let go one pause hold down go it's just i don't know i don't quite understand it so it's that part's a little frustrating and then just that they're not working like the one to switch modes or pages is four quick taps and then a hold. So you would hold down and then go one, two, three, four, hold and let go. And it just doesn't work for me. One, two, three, four. And when I got the light, it worked great for me. I could do it constantly. But it's just something with the driver and it, it just has stopped working properly with the pins. The one to program it is a two, two, two pin. So you hold down and then you go one, two, hold, one, two, hold, one, two, hold, and let go. And that would give you a uh, programming mode. So I'll try again. And I can get this one on occasion and then program it, which is nice. But it takes a while and it just doesn't always work. It's, it's a little frustrating right now, but I'm working with them on it. Um, so I don't want to do videos about all that until I have it down, you know, part of it's probably me not doing it right. Part of it's the thing is not working right. I confirm that it's not just me. I know some of you guys are going to be like, you're just an idiot. I know I am, but, um, yeah, so it takes 18, three fifties. Uh, I've been using these high discharge 1100 MAH M11s. I have these in all of my 18, three fifties. They work great. 
I like that this has a spring on both ends, so it's going to suspend that battery better. If you have any um, drops or anything like that, it should do better with that. It has really good threads. Um, this is aluminum, distressed aluminum, and then a stainless steel crenulated front bezel. Um, it doesn't add a ton of weight, and it's not magnetic, which is interesting. But these threads are really good. The O-ring is fantastic. And it just, yeah, it's really good. I love the aesthetic. It grew on me so much. When I first saw these, I really wasn't interested. Now, it might be my favorite design. Um, the clip works fantastically. And it looks good, too. They have a few options. Um, I should tell you the cost. This is a $700 flashlight. So they're $648 on their website. You can just buy them if you want. Um, they have a few different options for emitters in different temperatures and then secondaries in red or amber. I went with amber and I went with 4500K Nichia 519A emitters, which I am so glad I did because this is my favorite uh, light. It really is. It puts out the nicest light um, that I that I currently have. And it's close. My Kluma is really good as well, which I think has the same emitters. It's just different setup. Um, so I'm really happy with the light as a light. Um, I just get a little frustrated with the whole pin thing. And you guys know me with my OCD. I just can't let it go. So I'll sit there and just keep trying them and trying them and it just drives me up the wall. Um, but the guy I talked to over there, Dan, has been fantastic to talk to. And I'm always happy to wait and, and all that good stuff. I just need to be informed. And he's done a great job of informing me. And he's actually going to send me one that's set up with a McClicky switch. Because they did used to do that. Now you can't buy them with the McClicky switch. You have to buy it like this. And then you could order the body with the McClicky switch. But there's a whole thing with that. You can't just swap bodies. You actually have to change a pin code to be able to have the head then work with the other switch. So you have to be able to do the pin codes, which I can't do right now other than one. Um, so it's a whole thing. But he's sending me one that's set up already with McClicky. I'm going to test that out and see how I like it. Because um, I actually bought the McClicky body after thinking I could just throw it on here and well, found out I can't. So, um, I love that it has these little grooves here in the back. And so you can come in with your thumb right into one of those grooves and use the button that way. Or you can come right over the top, but you have that option, which is nice. So you can actually use it from over the top, which is cool. And then the crenulated front bezel is beautiful. They have flat ones as well, but I'm super glad they... Uh, had the crenulated when I ordered because I think it just looks sexy. Um, it's a gorgeous light. Feels great in the hand. It's very small. I mean, BOSS stands for big output, small size. Um, this is also an 18350 from Deadwood, which is, you know, not huge or anything, but um, the BOSS just, you know, it's probably the smallest one I have next to the Peanut. The Peanut is thicker, but it's definitely shorter. Um, and yeah, I mean, it has a great cigar grip. It's just a real pleasure to use. I do like the switch. Um, I just don't know if I like it enough to not have it just be like every other switch I have, if that makes sense. Like, you know, if I had the choice of switching them all to the moth, I don't know if I would do it just because I really like the acoustics I get. On the McClicky, I like the half taps and the full taps. Um, and I just, one thing I don't like about this is this brass ring. Um, it just kind of is weird, but it works. Um, but yeah, anyway, it feels great in the hand. The uh, cigar grip is wonderful. Um, it works really well. And yeah, I don't want to go too far into it, like I said, because I'm going to try to do more videos on this. Um, here's a look at the innards. You can't see a driver or anything. It must be underneath there, which is cool. So I think it's very protected if you were to drop it or something like that. Uh, it can heat up. I had it on for like, I don't know, eight minutes on what they call 14%, just illuminating a room, and it was smoking hot. Couldn't even hold it after. 
Um, but one thing I want to mention is 14% for this is really a lot more than 14% of the power that this can put out with a single 18350. The way they have it set up when you program it, it's based off of two batteries. Like if you had them stacked up, um, so that's seven volts, right? So 14% is really probably like closer to 40. Um, so you leave it on 40% for eight minutes or whatever, it's going to get hot. Um, so it's a little tricky when you're setting it up. You want to, um, you know, you just try stuff and you figure it out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for you know, ergonomics, aesthetics, feel, all that stuff. I'll try to show you the pin real quick and the programming, and then I'll get you guys out of here. I do have some test footage. And like I said, I'll come back to this. Um, I'll come back to this and do more videos. So let's go to Lux RC. So you go to this Lux RC website. And then you want to find this NXS button and then the R1 programming. And you're going to set up an account. I'm logged in right now. And you'll see it has it set up where you have one battery or two batteries. Um, and you can basically what that means is you can just have four modes or you can do up to eight. Um, you really don't need to worry about the battery thing. But you do have to make sure you select that you want it for two. Because if you change this to just the one battery, you're going to lose those four modes. Um, so I like to have four modes um, plus secondary. So I have it with the two batteries showing. And then you'll see these last three say not in use. And um, it's just hard because this is easier on a computer. So let me... I didn't even know you could do that. Huh, I didn't even see that setting. When setting the output to a higher level, make sure that you do not exceed the maximum allowed. Because you selected CR123A batteries, the output will be limited to 8.8 .8 watt, 29%. Interesting. Okay, anyway, didn't know that. Um, so I have it set right now to red moonlight, 0.9%, 4.6%. 14% and then afterburner, which is 100%. It's not really going to come on at 100%, 30 watts. It's going to come on at that 29% most likely. Um, so you can mess with these. You click on them and then there's all these options. These are all the different ones. You, so you can't select an exact number that you want, but you, there's so many options that you can get close to exactly what you want on everything. Um, and again, sorry, it's not the best on my phone, but, um, that's how it works. So I think, what did this one? I had, uh, 0.9, I think. Yeah. So there's the red moonlight 0.9, right? And then I'll just for this, I'll show you what the beacon looks like. Oops. See, just bear with me. Check. Oh, it must be at the end then. Can I even get to it on here? Let me turn it sideways and see. See this drag to scroll? There we go. Okay. So here's some other options you get. SOS, strobe, etc. Red beacon. You can also set up a custom signal that takes, you know, three seconds to blink or whatever. So we'll do that. Did not mean to do that. Okay, whatever. Did that work? So every three seconds, it'll blink for a quarter of a second, basically. And then I have all my other settings the same. You can also set memory to no memory, memory or hybrid, which basically is memory. But then once you turn it back on, you'll come on whatever you were on. And then when you tap again, it'll take you to the beginning of your mode group, which is pretty cool. And then you have battery protection disabled. Um, so you only want to use that with protected batteries. I must have hit that on accident. So obviously I want lithium ion battery protection active. 
because I do not have protected batteries in there. And then you can do battery stretch or you can get more output. And then this is your sensor adjustment for that um, proximity sensor. And I found 96 is about perfect. Um, if you go on, you know, it's not gonna just cut off randomly, but if you get close, it will. Um, so it works pretty well. It doesn't really work well in the pocket, just to note that. So then to program it, I have to hold down and do that two, two, two pin. So didn't work. So you just gotta, you just gotta keep trying until you get it. And we could be here a while, so. Okay, I'm gonna try longer pauses. Nope. Nope, shorter pauses. Nope. See, like right now, I just can't get it. And that's what happens, because it's not working properly. That time I screwed up. Nope. Nope. See how frustrating this is? Gotta do it faster, maybe. Okay, pause, 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 nope, pause, 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 nope. <sighs> Tanya, it's just like luck. Sometimes it decides to work and then you're like, okay, cool, I got it. Doesn't look like I'm gonna get it though. Ah, got it. All right. So I don't know if you noticed anything different, but you'll get this little light. And if you leave this on, it'll start blinking and that'll give you your actual serial number. So you just write down the number of blinks. And then there's, I think, five numbers. So like one. That would have been a seven. One, two. So you write a two, three right? And you just do that and that's how you get your serial number. But anyway, you get into program mode and you hit save and program. And then what you want to do is make sure your brightness is all the way up. So hang on a second. Turn your brightness all the way up on whatever device. And then you want to make sure it's, it's big enough for this to fit on it. So I'll show you. Program and then we make this bigger and place this on top. And it's literally going to do flashes on a screen. And that is going to program your flashlight, which is insane to me. So you'll know that it worked when that light is off after you've done it. So that light is now off. So we are done programming. And now I'll have the beacon as my first mode. So every three seconds... If I actually hit the button, every three seconds, it'll blink for a quarter of a second. And then everything else will be the same. So you could use this if you were camping or something and you wanted to have a beacon. I don't know. I It's not something I would use, but there it is. And then you could switch between groups. If, you, if it worked right, you could go one, two, three, four. 
and get it to switch between groups. I haven't been able to get that to work for a long time. So I just reprogram it back to what I had. So I'm gonna put um, Moonlight back on, the red Moonlight. Now comes the hard part. I gotta get it back into programming mode. And this could take a while. I might just do it after if I can't get it here. That was too fast, I think. It's just frustrating. One, two, 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 nope. Okay. So I'll do that after, just so I don't have to keep you guys here. But that's how you program it. It's very, very cool, as long as it's working properly. So um, the clip has this little spoon in it. that it, This clip is amazing. It works really, really well. The flashlight is just super cool. Um, and you're going to see the test footage. And you're just going to see how clean and beautiful of a light this is. Um, and it can get really bright for such a small light. Um, so I'm really happy with it. Uh, I would love to get it fully updated or whatever to where it's working properly. And then I can really do all the things I want to do, which is really just test it. I don't necessarily want all those things. I like it the way I had it with the moonlight and then the four modes. So that's how I would just use it. But I'm one of those people that can't just leave well enough alone. I know it can do things. So I want to try them. And if they don't work, it's just a little frustrating, you know? So let me just try one more time. Nope. All right. I'll do it later. So there you go. Let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, there should be plenty of follow-up videos on this. I don't plan on letting this go anytime soon. Um, this is one of my favorite lights I've tried, if not my favorite. So I love you guys. Thank you to OverReady for being cool. And um, yeah, hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you I have here and I'm doing a little flashlight testing. Got my over ready boss flashlight here with the uh, MOF switch, momentary off switch. And I am really loving this thing. Thinking about picking up the, um, the 70 body so I can put the, uh, put two 18 350s in it and just let her cook. Be kind of cool to test that out, but um, yeah. So let me just uh, get this a little lower so I can carry it around a little bit. There we go, sorry. And uh, yeah, so click it on. We're on secondary ambers. And then I have it set up to kick on at 1.4%. And uh, it's an 18.350 battery, 3.7 volt. So if anybody wants to do the nerd math on that, you could do that. Um, but yeah, 1.4%. And man, this thing is just a pleasure to uh, carry and use. I really do enjoy this flashlight. Now, 1.4 is kind of like my, what I like to call low, moonlight low, kind of. It's not quite moonlight. I use the amber for moonlight, but uh, this is pretty low. Um, and then I'm going to kick it up a notch. And this is uh, 14%. And now, yeah, I mean... I can see this uh, playground really well, no problem. Turn over here, I can see that soccer goal. Can't quite see that soccer goal out there too well, but definitely make it out better now that I have the light on it versus not. Um, kick it up one, I think this is 29%. And uh, yeah, I mean, really clean light. I can see very, very well whole playground is lit up for me just man it's a really good light get those trees there um, you know we're just touching the trees out there not really illuminating but you know that soccer goal is nice and lit up so is that baseball net or a backstop we have the truck so the next one here is going to be uh, i believe full tilt let me just one two three there we go so this is full tilt here you got that soccer goal there. The trees are starting to get lit up back there. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's got
got good flood. Look at that. Playground's really nicely lit up. Just excellent beam on this thing. Really, really good for EDC and back down. Um, so I'm going to do my sort of uh, walking thing here. So I'm going to set you guys up. I don't know how useful this is, but I like to do it. Man, my hands are freezing. I really need to get this glove thing sorted out for the next one. Jesus. Sorry, we're on a little bit of a lean here, but start off on amber secondary kick on over to Show you that proximity sensor there. It's pretty cool how it does that. Kicks down. So there you go, guys. And there's the glow ring. After you uh, use it a little bit, the O-ring in there has glow material. This does not uh, stay lit quite as long as the gasket does on that deadwood. Oh, the deadwood's called the Huckleberry. Just remembered. So this is still lit from my testing of this five minutes ago. This glow ring will darken up pretty quick, but it's still cool that they both have something like that, you know? Um, so there you go. That's the Overready Boss 35. And yeah, if I had to recommend one custom flashlight to you guys, one light to spend the money on, this is it right here. Just so cool, you know, unique and cool. So the nod has to go to this guy with that driver and just the switch and just, it's unique. Yeah, and that makes it awesome. And it's small, comfortable in the hand, in the pocket, weight. Everything just feels good about this light. Such a damn good light. So thanks for checking it out. I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.